What is up guys, DZ Fear, and today I want to show you my Evol deck profile. Um, this is more of a casual deck. I know usually I post decks that are more competitive. Um, but yeah, this, this one's just kind of fun if you want to play it at locals, but it is a lot of fun, and I really miss playing this deck back when it was at least pretty good. Um, especially when like Evo Singularity came out, it's pretty hyped. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. Um, and also I'm playing some tech that we'll talk about in a second. Um, but first, we're playing three Evotile Westlow. Uh, this is obviously your star player. It's the one that you want to open. Um, we are essentially playing six copies of it with the Evil um, diversity. Uh, so yeah, you have a pretty good chance of opening it. And when you do, um, you're usually pretty set. Uh, we're also playing two Najasho. Um, you don't really want to open this guy. You just want to search it on like the second or third turn. Um, but obviously he's important for uh, comboing with Evo Force. So you want to play at least two of him. Um, for the Evil Soars, we're playing three Serato. Serato is important because... Um, there's no point in bringing out two Volcanoes when you have the Najasho and Forest combo because one of them will miss timing. I don't know why they made that one miss timing. It's super frustrating. Um, but this guy doesn't miss timing, and he won't call cause the Volcano to miss timing, obviously. Um, so yeah, you're usually bringing this out with the Evo Force. Um, but we are still playing three, three Volcano. Um, this is obviously really important because it's like a one-card rank four. Um, usually you're going for your Evolzars, but sometimes you go for like Lightning or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can't, I mean, you can, but you, you shouldn't bring out two of these at the same time because one will miss timing, so be careful with that. Um, we're also playing two Diplo. Uh, this guy's always been the worst one, but I think it's like especially true for right now. Um, almost all back row is chainable, um, and this guy doesn't really do anything to those. Um, I, I honestly just can't think of a lot of back row that this is like really good against. Um, but he's still important just for... Sometimes you do need to pop back row, and sometimes you don't really need to summon Serato, or you banish your Serato's off of Desires, anything like that. Um, still, we're going to play two. He's the next, he's like the third best dinosaur, so like you have to play him. Um, for the artifacts, we're playing three Scythe, um, two of the red guy, one of the Meraltok. Um, this is a pretty standard artifact engine. Um, I suppose you could run a smaller one with just like two Scythe and one Merle Talk, but I think this is best because it gives you more access to rank fives. Um, so yeah, not really anything special that we need to talk about with those. Um, one tech that I am playing, I am playing two of the Fire True King. Um, True Kings are going to get a lot of support in the coming weeks, but for now, um, we're just playing these two. Um, so this card helps a lot of different situations. Uh, mainly, this deck has a huge problem going second. Uh, when you have artifacts and like flip effects and stuff like that, it's it's really tough going second. Um, but this guy uh, accelerates your uh, game state because it, it puts monsters in the graveyard for singularity and for volcano, um, which is just really important. So it just speeds up your turn by like um, at least one turn, maybe even two turns. Um, but also he's just a big body and he banishes a card a monster without targeting, which is just incredible. Um, so I really like this guy in this deck, especially when you're going second. But you don't really need to play three because you don't want to open multiples. But yeah, definitely one of the better techs that I found. Um, we're obviously playing three Evo Force. Um, this card isn't like... Even when you don't have Najasho, this card's still fine when you distribute like a Westlow. Um, usually you're getting your value out of it, so I think playing three is correct. Um, and it's like your main combo card. Uh, three Evo Diversity, your Searcher. Not really... And it, no real, real explanation needed there. Um, we're actually just playing two Desires in this deck. Um, I want to keep it as close to 40 as possible. Um, you also never really want to resolve two in this deck, where a lot of decks where I play three of this card, it's perfectly fine to draw like two of them over the course of a duel. Um, but in this deck, if you're like resolving two of these, like there's just too many important cards that you would vanish, so I just want to stick to two. We're also playing two Artifact Ignition. Um, I think three is a bit too much, but it's still important. Um, and then just one Soul Charge. This card, if you open, like, uh, the True King and Soul Charge with, like, any two uh, Evols, like, that's, like, the best hand you could possibly open. Um, especially if you have, like, an Artifact Sanctum as well. But, yeah, Soul Charge is just pretty sacky. Um, we're playing three Evo Singularity. Uh, this card's obviously kind of slow. I mean, the whole deck is, but that's just the nature of it. Um, but with the True King, th this card is a lot faster and a lot more consistent. So I, I, I have no problem playing three of it. Um, we're also we're also obviously playing through Artifact Sanctum. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, and then two Call of the Haunted. Um, no no real reason to play three just because like the artifacts are like all you would be targeting. Um, 
if, if Volcano like triggered off of Call of the Haunted, I'd probably play three, but it doesn't, so we're just playing two. And then lastly, just one emptiness. Um I didn't really I don't really like traps in the sec, because I feel like your hands are like already really slow. Um so I just kinda went with a, a six trap or a, sorry, a nine trap lineup. Um but emptiness is just too important not to play this format, so I wanted to play that. That's it for the main deck. Um, for the extra deck, it's pretty standard, or what you'd expect from this sort of thing. Um, we're playing two Lagia, um, two Dolka, and then two Solda. Um, I don't know how I feel about Solda right now. I, I mean, it's still good. I'd say that, I don't know, a lot of times with Singularity, you're just going for Dolka or Lagia, but I think Solda, Solda is still a good option, especially against some decks. Um, so yeah, I, I think... I don't know. It, it's like good against metal foes, especially like any any pendulum deck because it just blows up the whole pendulum summon. Um, but yeah, so that, that's sort of the six evolves our lineup um, for the non dragons. We're playing. What do we got? We got a break sword. Um, if you ever played this deck, you know that a lot of times you just end up with two vessels on field, and like you can't like do anything with them. The best play when the deck was first out was definitely just. Uh, Someone like a Leviathan Dragon or Zen Mains or something. But uh, I, I Break Sword is definitely like the best rank 3 generic. Um, so we're going to play that. Um, for the rank 4s, we have Castell, Dweller, Dagisto Emerald, and then Utopia as well as Utopia the Lightning. Pretty standard. And then for the rank 5s, we have Pleiades, Durandal, and Tyrus. Um I don't really like Volcasaurus right now. I think it's always like super dangerous. So we're not playing Volcasaurus. Um, but these are pretty much your, like, standard rank 5s, or at least these two are. Um, Pleiades is especially important, because you, like, make it, and then you, like, you usually, like, call the Haunted, um, some artifact back, and then overlay with it to make Pleiades, and then you detach the artifact to bounce the Call the Haunted back to your hand. So you just get, like, infinite value off of one Call the Haunted, um, and then you can reuse it a second time, or I guess, at that point, a third time if you bounce it back with the Pleiades. So a lot of times... The way you're locking your opponent out is just by bouncing Call the Haunted and reusing Scythe while you're making um, more and more like Evolzars. So like you just have like Pleiades, um, Lagia, and, or Dolka, and then you just keep reusing Scythe so that your opponent can't summon from the extra deck. It's usually enough to just win the game right there. Um, pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that was my Evol, or Evol um, deck profile. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Like I said, not super competitive because, I mean, you're just, you just have a lot of like essentially just like normal monsters to draw i mean you kind of have to play these but uh yeah it, it can be good and there's definitely some cool hands and cool interactions so I, I like decks like that um, but hopefully you guys know the deck profile and i will see you later bye